Hey, welcome everybody to NCC Online. My name is Pastor Rob. Thanks for being with us today as we jump into another of the Win the Day series. This is part six. Here's where we've been. We did flip the script on week one, kiss the wave, week two, eat the frog, week three, fly the kite. Uh, Dustin did cut the rope, and now we are on wind the clock. Wind the clock is all about how we use our time. And if you're thinking, didn't we cover that a little bit? You'd be right. In week three, when we talk about eat the frog. We did talk a little bit about some time management principles. And we mentioned two big words, big Bible words about time. Those words are chronos and kairos. Chronos and kairos. And today I want to go into more depth about those because I really do believe that in this wind the clock habit, we can advance the kingdom of God by using our time wisely and understanding what the Bible is trying to show us with these two different words. Now, chronos, you may remember, sounds like chronology. That's a way to remember it. It's time that's linear. It's time that's functional. It's time that's productive. You can think of it as a quantity of time. And the Bible uses that word number of times in the same concept in the, in the New Testament. And even in the Old, the same concept is there. But Kairos time doesn't mean the same thing. It, it's often translated time. Sometimes it's translated opportunity because it's more about the quality of the time that we have. It's looking out for the Holy Spirit's prompting, for example. It's listening to the voice of God in the right now. It's trying to hear and discern. What, what is God asking me to do? It's, it's trying to be wise in the use of our time. It's not just a quantity of time. It is also a quality of time. Here's a way you can think of it. Think about when you take a family trip. If you're like me, I've taken many family trips over the years. When your children are younger, you're, you pack them in the minivan, and I'm a chronos time type of guy, probably to a fault, but so are many Americans. It's the way we're wired. Maybe you're like me. And if you are, then your whole goal is to get there in good time. Many of you, if you, especially if you're the driver, you're just like, hey, we stop at McDonald's, you're in, you're out, we get in the car, we keep going. We stop at gas, do it as efficiently as possible. Take the best route, make the best time, and I was always disappointed if I didn't beat my, my time. And, and that's chronos time. And you can understand that that has a bit of a tyranny to it because you don't really enjoy the journey, if you're honest. But Kairos is a little different. Kairos is the child in the back seat looking out the window, just daydreaming, looking at some of the skyscrapers or the big buildings or the landmarks, see, seeing the sights. It might even be playing a game or even taking a nap, but just enjoying the journey. That's a little bit more what the Bible says about Kairos. The Bible says you need both. It, it is good to manage our time well and to be productive, but if you're only productive in chronos time, then you're going to miss out in life. And worse, you're going to miss out in advancing the kingdom of God because Kairos time is about advancing the kingdom of God, listening to the Spirit of God, listening for God's holy moments. And with that in mind, I'd like to begin uh, this message with a word of prayer. Father, help us to live the way you've asked us to live with these seven habits each week. Help, help us to take this one to heart. May your Holy Spirit speak through me today in a powerful way to do whatever you want to do. I pray, Father, that we would understand the difference between Kronos and Kairos time in a way that is practical and life-giving and, and that you would encourage us in this day that anyone listening in would know your Spirit's voice. And we pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. So I have broken down this message to talk about Kairos time in three different parts. There's, there's sort of three biblical principles that I see here about Kairos time that are very relevant, very practical, that I hope you can, you can take away very directly. And the question that I want to start with is this. Do you want to count your days or do you want your days to count? Because Kronos is all about counting your days, whereas Kairos is making your days count, making the moments count for eternity. The first biblical principle then is this. Kairos is the right use of our time. 
It's not just counting your days, it's making your days count. It's the right use of the actual time that we have. Now many have said that time is the great equalizer and that is so true. In this world, everybody's different. We all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. Sometimes we're born into a difficult situation. Sometimes you have afflictions and health issues and ailments. Some people have money and some people don't have money. The, there are all kinds of things that make this world unjust, unfair, but the one great equalizer is time. Everybody gets the same amount of time. Everybody gets 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or a local church pastor. We all get the same amount of time. And that's good news because we can use that time in an extremely wise way or we can piddle it away and waste it. And Kairos is the right use of the time that we have. We saw this verse a few weeks ago, Ephesians 5.16, really very relevant to the discussion. It says, make the best use of your time. These are sinful days, short and sweet. And notice here, when it says time, it's using the word kairos in the Greek, which means the quality of your time, an opportunity, some translations say, of the time that you have. So this isn't just um, layering more and more work and filling your schedule with more and more things and trying to be productive to the point where you're stressed out and having no margins. This is saying, no, as you go through that journey, let's pay attention. Let's be spirit led. Let's use our time wisely. Let's redeem the Kairos time that we have. In the Old Testament, you see the same concept and it comes up in Ecclesiastes 3 where the author says that there is a time for everything. Literally everything has a time and a season for every activity under the sun. So this season means that it's, again, it's not just about stacking your time or chronology time or uh, having a beginning and an end or a, a punching a clock and saying now it's open. No, they're saying throughout your life, you're going to see seasons, you're going to see changes, you're going to see opportunities, you're going to see a, a time for everything. And that's the same concept that Kairos has. In fact, this whole section starts saying there's a time to be born, there's a time to die, there's a time to plant and harvest and all of these different things that people do. And it concludes this verse 11 that God has made everything beautiful in its time. And that's the wonderful thing about Kairos time is that God has a season for everything and he makes it very beautiful for us. It's a beautiful world that he's given us when we see this journey of life as filled with his abundance, his opportunity, the beauty around us. We often miss it if you're just looking at it like most of us Americans do, chronos time and being productive. It also says God has set eternity in the human heart. So within us is the sense that we're going to live forever and that in Christ we can have eternal life with God and that the moments we have on this earth are actually quite short, so use them very well. When I was a teenager and just getting into church for the first time, my first church experience, I remember there was a man in our church who lived in Kronos time. He, he didn't have any Kairos time. I didn't know that's how to word it back then, but now I know that's how to word it. I just thought he was a quirky interesting and even kind of funny person because what would happen is we would have our church service every Sunday morning and the preacher would get going and sometimes he would go over time. Uh, I, I never do that, but sometimes preachers go over time and that's sometimes because they're feeling God's spirit, sometimes because God's just pushing them a little bit, sometimes because they, they just lost track of time. But this man, if we would go just one minute after the hour, if it was like 10.01 a.m., one minute late, he literally would take his watch off of his wrist every time and he would hold it up like this and, and dangle it and make sure the pastor could see him in the back row. And he would just hold it up there until he quit speaking and the service was over. Why? Because he had no sense of Cairo's time. His time, his world was all about when the clock hit the number, that's it. Chronology, we're over. Who cares if the preacher's just getting warmed up or the Spirit of God is sending out fire from heaven? It doesn't matter because it's over. Now, now later on, I, I thought it was funny back then, but I, looking back, I said, well, first of all, it's kind of rude. I'm glad no one in the church does that to me. Maybe you do it from home. I, I wouldn't know. 
but worse, it's not a good way to live your life. Not seeing that God may be giving me a moment uh, of opportunity in, in some big way, a mission for my life, uh, something he's asking me to do, a service that, that he wants me to perform. It, it may be a relationship he wants me to pursue. It may be to help someone in need. There, there, there is an abundance of possibilities with Cairo's time, but we need to be in that spirit to see them and understand that, that they are all around us. Here's the second biblical principle. Kairos time lives in the present. Now, it has a past and it has a future, but I'm convinced after studying it more and more, even this week, that Kairos in the Bible tends to be in the present tense, that, that it's about the right now. And that's so good and important, especially for someone like me. I'm wired to be in the future. Some people are wired to be in the past. Many of us are not in the present, if we're honest. I, I, I think it's something like 80 plus percent of us in our culture, in our world, are just too busy to be present in the right now. And we all sort of feel that, that that's a sort of a new phenomenon in, in our world in the last 30 years. And when we do that, we miss out on what God has for us. We're living in Kronos time, which is a chronology that's in the past all the way to the future. But we're not living in the Kairos moment. Did you know that God is actually outside of time? I've thought about that for years. I still don't understand it, but it's true. You can see it in the scriptures, but more than that, we just know it because he's an infinite God that set up space and time when he created the universe. It didn't exist until he said, this is the rules for this particular people in this world that he created. 2 Peter 3.8 says this, uh, Don't forget this one thing, dear friends, with God with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. It's not the only time in the scripture it says that. It's just one of many times it's reminding us God isn't in our time. Like we, we, we could feel a day go by and to God it might as well be a thousand years or a thousand years might as well be a day. Um, not only that, but we read in Revelation that Jesus himself is the Alpha and the Omega. As God incarnate, he is the beginning and the end. That's what those words are signifying. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He has no beginning. He has no end. He's infinite. He's eternal. He is there with God in the creation. He's eternally present. He's with God in the future. This is mind-blowing stuff, and I don't want to get off our, on a tangent right here, but it's actually probably good to think about the infinite nature of God because it, it, it lifts up who he is, his nature, and how important he is and how powerful he is. But let's get practical. We don't acknowledge the infinite nature of God, and so we tend to be on this line, this this beginning and end and, and the middle, and we don't we're we're not present in, in our realities for other people and for God's service. I think a lot of people are living in the past. A lot of people are looking back. We're, we're just pulled back, I think, by regrets and memories, sins that we've done that we, we haven't quite gotten over, hurts, wounds, all of these things. And by the way, it's worth taking some time to really think about that today and say, well, have I processed wounds and hurts and sins? And have I really let Jesus forgive me and heal me and help me? And maybe I, I need to get someone in my life to help me process those things. And we look back so much that we don't really live in the present or we're just partially in the present there's a, a movie i like called napoleon dynamite i know a lot of people don't like this movie i'm one of those weird people that really like this movie i thought it was hilarious and there's a, if you've seen it you know where i'm going there's a character called uncle rico and uncle rico is always living in the past he is completely outdated in the way he dresses in how he talks everything about him screams the 80s which makes him so fun. And his dialogue is all about the past. He wants to go back to high school, especially so that he could repeat the ways that he's failed. If he could only get back in the big football game and throw the game winning pass, all of his life would have taken a different trajectory. But now he's sort of living out of his van at his grandma's house. In one scene, he says this. He says, how much you want to bet? How, how much you want to make a bet I can throw a football over them mountains. Yeah, coach would have put me in the fourth quarter. We would have been state champions, no doubt, doubt, no doubt in my mind. Now, if you've seen the movie, you're smiling because it's funny. If you haven't seen it or if you hate the movie, you're like, uh, that's terrible. But regardless of that, it, it's a reminder of what we all know is true, that we can live with these regrets 
we, we don't quite get past them and we don't quite live in Kairos time of the right now. And if it's a sin that you've sh- you struggle with, you have to give it to Jesus to let his blood cover it, that he died on the cross, that if you're a Christian, if you believed in Christ, you claim his blood to cover you from that past sin so that you can move on. You can be daily in the present and let God move you into the future. Or if it's a regret or a hurt, there's nothing you can do to change it now. So you let God redeem your life. That's a biblical concept, a biblical word, that he takes what is broken and he makes it something beautiful. He makes beauty out of ashes as we like to sing. A- and he takes uh, the broken pieces and, and puts them into a beautiful mosaic, a stained glass window of your life. That's you and that's me. We have to live in the present. When you live in the past, you forget that God is already in your future. Because as I pointed out, he is beyond our space and time. He's bigger than that, way bigger than that. Ephesians 2.20 reminds me of this. Here's what it says. We are God's handiwork, you and me, Christ's followers, Jesus' people. We're his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus. Why? To do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. If you think of this in Kronos time only, it's almost like God skipped into the future, prepared my future for me, just for me, what he has in mind, and then skip back. Now, God doesn't have to do that because he's outside of Chronos time, but we are bound by it to some degree. So we're moving into the future, but here's the thing. God's outside of the future. He went ahead and prepared a great plan for you and me. That's something to claim. That's something to believe. That, that's something. That's a reason to stop worrying. Why would I worry about my future all the time if I know that God already planned a really good future for me, just what he wanted, he mapped it out, and I just got to listen to him and follow him the rest of my life and persevere so that I can live it out and, and be rewarded with eternal life. Jesus said this, don't worry about tomorrow, Matthew 6, 34, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. So now we're saying, don't don't just not look at the past. Don't worry about the future either. Kairos doesn't do that. Jesus says, all that stuff tomorrow, you have no control over it. Why are you worried about it? That's not going to help. It's just going to hurt. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt your relationships. It's going to hurt your life. So instead of doing that, be in the Kairos present. And here's what that looks like. If you have children, for example, too many of us, we are not present for them. And now you can't be present all the time. You, you, you're busy and doing things, but set aside some time to be present with them. Put your phone away. Look, look at them in the eyes. Talk to them. Um, have a relationship with the people that God has put in your life. Be present for them and fully invested in them. Be present for the, the, the now, what God is asking you to do. Don't just be multitasking with 18 different things. Uh, allow God to speak to you. Be aware of your environment, your surroundings, what, what God is trying to say through, through his word and through prayer. You might even sense him in the nature and the, your surrounding. Kairos does all of those things. And don't just try to hurry up and get to the next thing. That, that, that's too many of us. I do that, especially in my past. I, I hope I'm getting better at it, but we can be so impatient. Even with beautiful things, I, I remember when my children were babies. Um, they were awesome babies, and I l- love all of my children, obviously. But I was one of those people who was like, eh, baby stage doesn't really do it for me. It, and I just wanted to hurry up. Like, I wanted them to be able to talk. Like, yeah, it's one thing you can talk to them, but do they really understand you? And they would never talk back. And I, of course, you got to be careful what you wish for because when they can't talk back it's not that great and when I would want to engage with them they couldn't really engage back not not much you know you couldn't throw a football to a baby because it just plunks them off the top of the head and it's not really that fun and as they got a little you know two or three year olds that's when it started to become a little bit more fun for me but here's the thing don't just just don't just rush through those steps if you're a parent because you miss out. And I did because I just rushed through some of those steps. And instead, of you just, yep, yeah, maybe it's not your favorite stage. But like Ecclesiastes says, there's a season for everything. There's a Kairos moment right here and now that God wants me to see and embrace and, and sense and worship him for and be grateful for. 
and, and we can do that in all facets. You don't have to be a parent to understand that. It, it, it's, it's in every avenue of our lives. Uh, the NBA started up this week, which is my favorite sport. I just love basketball, and we, we watch it on TV, and we enjoy it, and my kids have played it, and, and, and so on. And I was thinking back with this message about the Chicago Bulls when Michael Jordan was on the team, the probably the best team NBA team there ever was. And one of the things they would always do is before every game, that Michael Jordan squad, they would huddle up. Of course, they were trying to get the crowd pumped up in the arena, and they would get the lights and all this stuff. If you've ever seen it, you know. And, and the team would huddle up and, and, and someone would say, what time is it? And then everybody would say together, it's game time. Huh. Just like that. What time is it? Game time. Huh. And every game they did that, and it just got you so pumped. I wasn't even a Bulls fan and I loved it. I thought it was so great. Well, that's an, that's an example of what we're talking about. They were living, the, living in the Kairos present. That was not a chronos sense of time. When they said it's game time, they were saying the most important thing right now, guys, is this moment. The most important thing, our mission, if you will, is to play this game right now and to play it to the best of our ability. Yeah, we want to win, but we want to lay out ourselves to do it. We want to give it everything we have. And that's what they did. That's why they won so many championships. They, without knowing it, had a Cairo sense of time. Now, Christians, we need to do that too, but for a much greater purpose, the kingdom of God. We need to have that same mentality. We ought to huddle up and say, hey, what time is it? Church is game time. It's on right now that we look for the present opportunities that God has given us individually as a church and that we do that all for the glory of God. And one of the ways that you can do that is this uh, third step, which is this. Kairos doesn't find the time it makes the time. Kairos isn't about just sort of wandering through life, again, looking to the past, looking to the future, wandering around, wondering, why am I so stressed out? Why am I so busy? Just adding to our schedule. It actually makes time, which is the game time. It, it looks for what God is doing on the earth and what God has uniquely asked me to do to participate in his story just like I was saying with the Chicago Bulls. And one of the ways we can do that is by saying no. We all know that we're supposed to say yes to a lot of things. As Christ followers, I'm supposed to say yes to what God has commanded me to do. I'm supposed to say yes to the Holy Spirit. I'm supposed to say yes to the things of God. But we also need to learn how to say no. If you want to find if you want to make the time, the right kind of time, then you're going to have to say no to many things in your life. Now, that's easy when those things are negative things, sinful things, bad things, time wasters. Where it's hard is sometimes you'll have to say no to good things. You will actually have to say no to really good things if you want to do the greater things in your life. Jesus did that. And I want to show you an example. It's Mark 1, 35 to 38 says this very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed Simon and his companions went to look for him and when they found him they explained everyone is looking for you Jesus replied let us go somewhere else to the nearby village villages so I can preach there also that is why I have come so essentially this Jesus had already been doing good ministry there that's what he wanted to do the crowds came and they're begging Jesus, come and do more good ministry. Naturally, that's what they wanted. They, wanted him, they would have had him stay there for the rest of his life. That was a good request. Jesus said, no, I have to go on to many different villages. I have to reach many different people. And he had that crystal clarity about what he was called to do. And as you're called to do God's work, you'll have to do the same thing too. Cairo says no to many good things so that it can say yes to the greater things that God has given us to do. And that's why I said, you don't have to find the time, you can, you make the time. Now, in our culture, people say, well, you know, I'd love for you to be a regular church attender, online or in person. But people say, well, I just can't seem to find the time. Well, that's not understanding Kairos, because Kairos makes the time for the things of God. Uh, today, especially, people are saying, well, I don't really need to be a regular church attender. 
I, I can be a Christian in my own way. Well, that, that's just a way of saying I'm going to disobey God's commands. And I don't need to honor the Sabbath. I don't need to worship corporately with other people. I don't need to be part of the fellowship and all the many different commands of the Bible that are all included by being part of church. Kairos doesn't find the time. It makes the time to do the things of God. And sometimes we have to say no to other things on Sunday morning, for example, so that we can do the greater things. Someone says, well, I would love for you to serve in the church to to help in the nursery or to work with students or to work in the uh, local Christian group down the road. Well, I I can't seem to find a time. Well, Cairo says, I'm going to make the time. Uh, What time is it? It's game time. Why? Because the days are evil and God wants you to advance the kingdom of God. He wants you to do that in various ways on this earth. But it's going to be difficult. Did you know that the average person is interrupted now every eight minutes? I read that this week and I thought, oh my goodness, that, that's terrible. I don't like to get interrupted. Every eight minutes you get interrupted. Now there's some moms listening right now and you're shaking your head thinking, well, I wish it was only eight minutes. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I get that. There's a season for everything under heaven. You're in a season right now. It's going to be more difficult. But even you can make the time to do the things that God has asked you to do in, 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 within uh, the boundaries that you have. So we want to realize this is a distracted world. We're getting pulled in all sorts of directions. One of the ways the evil one is pulling us away is from church attendance. He, he, doesn't, he just doesn't like that. So he's going to give us all kinds of excuses not to be part of fellowship. Uh, he, he'll even use uh, the deadly disease of COVID to keep us away from each other. And instead, we ought to say, you know what, I'm going to make the time to do the things of God. And and if that's online, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch and make sure I'm a part of things online. And I want to close with this thought. Back to Jesus. He said no to many things so that he could say the greater yes. But his greatest mission, of course, his ultimate mission was to go to the cross and to die for his people for their sins. And we see this in Romans 5, 6, a verse I want to conclude with, which says this, when we were utterly helpless, that's you and me, utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time. That's the word kairos there. Take a look at that. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. That's kairos in action. That's the ultimate version of, in the ultimate verse for Cairo's time, that, that Jesus died at just the right time when we were still in our sins to redeem us and to love us. And here's his model for you and me and the rest of humanity, that we would be on mission for God and do his purposes on the earth and that we wouldn't have to find the time, but we would make the time for the kingdom of God. So I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope you leave with this question in mind. Do you want to count your days or do you want your days to count? That's the question I want to leave you with. And I hope that you say, yeah, I want to make my days count. For whatever days I have left on this earth, I want them to be all for Jesus, all for the kingdom. And I'm not going to be perfect, but I'm going to strive to do my best by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in Kairos time with Kronos as well, but to, to enjoy the things of God while I have breath. Let's pray one more time. Lord in heaven, again, I thank you for your word, your insights, your Holy Spirit. Take this message further than I could, even with an imperfect messenger. But we thank you that you can give us the time that you want us to have in a Kronos way, but also make it beautiful and exciting and quality time in a Kairos way. You can use even us to do extraordinary things. Put us on mission here at New Community Church. Give us a new vision for the years to come. And help us all to get on board and individuals who are listening in as well, that they would have personal missions, family missions, life missions that you would make clearer and clearer and that we would just go for it, Lord. It's game time. And we thank you for all you're going to do. And we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks again for listening in. Be sure every week on Monday morning or whenever you want on demand throughout the week to check out our podcast, NCC Beyond Sundays, wherever podcasts are found. It's really easy to get that hooked up. Uh, And I hope that you uh, have a wonderful day.